I am going also to share the screen now. So if you um, guys can just tell me when you see the screen sharing. So you are able now to see the screen, I guess. Very good. So I shall um, start from where we we stopped. Uh, I hope that you're all well and uh, thanks for coming back. I always uh, have that feeling that when I uh, come back to the teaching, uh, I will find no one because you are all got upset or, or majority of you. For, so thank you very much for uh, some of you still uh, happy to proceed. So I shall proceed now. We stopped last time by this uh, breast case uh, and uh, the differentiations between the cupular uh, adenoma and the, the nodular uh, or, or the, the sclerosing adenosis. And uh, what, it, what it is that um, in the brownie points, I, I tend to forget the points or the, the additional informations where you want to score, which is very important if you are dealing with a neoplastic case, of course, uh, uh, you have to mention the hormonal status uh, that you would be testing for the PR, ER, and HER2, uh, because this will be, uh, you will be marked down if you don't really put that in your report. So this is just one thing that I uh, remembered from last time. And in terms of uh, some uh, questions uh, that I was sent as well that um, for Monday that uh, Model answers. The problem is that providing a model answer, there's nothing that does fit for all. Everything is different. Every case is, it can be dealt with on its own merit. The problem is that uh, we, we in the college, we don't like the fact of circulating any model answers because that does upset the college. But you will, you will get to understand the model answers as we go more through cases and you will be able to build up on, okay, so the model answers has to have one, two, three, four, five. And this is what we will uh, be trying to build on this uh, presentation. So my apology, I cannot provide a model answer. So the other things as well, which I briefly wanted to say, that we are targeting the exam here and we will go through the cases as, as they are as, as they are for the exam. And uh, forgive me that if I sometimes take my time in, in going through certain cases because I try to just explain the concepts why the case come for the exam, what will be what we will be after as examiners when you when you come across these cases. If you're really under or, or after a general knowledge, as I told you, then this is not the right platform. If you, because I, I, I am not the expert in the field. The people who can give you the insights into any subspecialty in pathology are the expert in the fields, and I am not one of those. So please just uh, try to to get on with this fact. And I said there are a lot of lectures online on the past cast everywhere else that a lot of experts from America, from England, that have put their voice up with beautiful demonstrations of certain entities. So you, if you want really to learn that, that's uh, that is where you will find that platforms. And uh, the, 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 that's absolutely fine. But uh, I just always, always tell my registrars and to a trainee and fellows, don't uh, go too deep because the, the, when the, the levels of the exam, the exam in the United Kingdom done, so we encourage people to sit after finishing three years of training. So that is year four of training when people in England will sit the exam. And this is the level we expect the exam to be at, at someone just only spent three years in training. If you really, after a very detailed descriptions of the the very sophisticated areas of, for example, of lymphomas and the things. This is not what we will be delivering here, and uh, my sincere apology for this. Now, this case is a paravertebral uh, mass, uh, and uh, this um, was a case uh, very similar to the case uh, I did uh, that uh, that came in the exam about uh, 
I think four years back. It is one of the uh, difficult cases that ca came, and the reason behind it uh, that uh, it comes in, it came in a short surgical. And in real life, if I am to get this case in real life, I would be expecting that I will have the the seeing the macro for this tumor, being able to realize does it is it necrotic, not uh, is it circumscribed, not circumscribed. You know, in the macro, you probably would have gathered some idea about what you're dealing with, but here you are hit with this. Uh, a little bit of uh, some muscles around and then some uh, neoplastic cells which are filling the fields. For me, this is one of the biggest nightmare cases of the exam. And, and uh, the reason uh, behind it, because uh, obviously you are like in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a desert, I would say, uh, and then you have to find out your way all what you see, some collagen, some muscles at the periphery, some adipose tissue, and then neoplastic cells. So to start with, you are not in a common territory. You are in a very hostile territory. And then you will have to, to, to play the game, the, the old game for a case like this. Am I dealing really with an epithelial malignancy or is it malignant or not, first of all? Is it inflammatory or non-inflammatory? Uh, and if you think that this is neoplastic, then it is, is, is it benign or malignant? And then subsequently you will go down the road or if there is epithelial, um, if it is an epithelial uh, malignancy, um, uh, or, or is it melanoma? Is it lymphoma or is it sarcomatous tumor with enchymal malignancy? So this is the, the, the thought process that any of us as pathologists will go through a case like this, especially in unfamiliar territory. Yes, if you are in the colon, if you are in the, in the liver, your thought process will be a little bit different. Uh, and in the star, in the kidney, your thought process will be a little bit different. But here, in an, in, as soon as you put yourself in this situation, i.e., unfamiliar territory, middle of nowhere, then ideally, what you need to do is to put those four differentials into your mind. One one thing as well, which is quite important, and it's useful for you guys to 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 um, practice it. Uh, when you do your mocks or you try to mimic exam cases, whenever you form an initial impression about a certain case, just on the corner of your answer page, write your initial impression on the corner, but do not stick to it, right? Now, one of the things is that the initial impression is important, but it can be misleading for FRC path exam. And there will be the cases where there will be the initial impression will lead you to the wrong, completely wrong directions. And the college know that. We, we know that these cases are the cases where the first impression really leads, will lead you to the wrong path. And this is why the college will bring these cases on and on and on again, because they find that people are failing on this case. And... Uh, and then, and then it, they think that it's a good learning experience in a way. But this is one thing. The other things as well that on, I, 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 so just put your first impression on the side of your paper. And if you ever decided that your first impression is not going to work, just tell me and, um, and tell the examiner, remember to, to uh, tell the examiner um how how you will be able to um how you will be able to 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 why do you think it is not so one of the things to remember uh about a case is that you need to remember uh that um that your first impression which you you which is valid 
that you have to, if you went in the opposite directions and you're not going to include it in your answer, just please make sure that you are telling me in your answer sheet why did you uh, 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 did, did you not you, or did you choose not to go for that first impression because this will be your differential diagnosis in that case most likely the the things is which I I know people are usually eager to to see is the 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 high power but I told you. I am not. I am uh, one, one of the things he, what, which I wanted you to to practice here with me, and this will turn into a habit. Is to practice the low power. If because if you are a high power person, which a lot of us are, and guilty of because we work under time pressure and things, then we are tend to to try to stay by medium and high power most of the time. But I wanted you to learn how to appreciate the low power because this is a very crucial step in the exam and um and 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 it will make a lot of difference so in the low power if i ask you simply do you think that this is a well circumscribed tumor or or do you think that this is an infiltrative tumor you see so you can see there is muscle around here there is some tissues here and then we have the other edge of this section on the corner here. And I will just go by the edges. And all what you need now to tell me is what do you think? So some of you now writing relatively circumscribed. Yes, any more takers on this? So any more takers? No? Okay, so you all <laughs> you all keeping your opinion for yourself, but that's absolutely fine. So some of you looks infiltrative towards one edge. Uh, maybe you mean around this, but you don't know where the continuation of tissue here in this part. There are some hemorrhage, yes, absolutely, which is a common good thing to notice in in this power. There are areas of hemorrhage, but this can be also traumatic during surgery. So just uh, uh, keep your OFNA, absolutely. So just keep your, your options open when you see hemorrhage. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to highlight to you that I used to be a surgeon for 10 years before I became a pathologist. So you will find that all of my terminology is to do with the surgery as well. So forgive me for, 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 for this. The glandular formations, okay, we will go through that. But on the no power, if you, if you focus on these areas, which I put now in the middle of the screen, you can see that there were, there are fat here actually. And I'm not going to go still at, at a higher power, but I wanted you to believe that there is fat and the fat is giving you that honeycombing appearance. And the honeycombing appearance, which you are able to see in, in areas like this, is infiltrative. You know, when you go to this uh, very famous DFSP of, uh, of skin, you know, the dermatofibrosarcoma of the skin, one of the features that everyone knows and presented to you guys is it has got extra honeycombing, which are the fat infiltration or fat entrapment with the, the tumor. This is by itself is an infiltrative uh, features which we are able to see. The other things as well, which on the low power will help you a lot, is the fact that you you look for a lymphovascular invasion because you can appreciate the vessels as you can see there are a lot of vessels here, uh, which you will be able to appreciate on low power, and what it tends to do appreciating that there are a lot of vessels for me is um, the fact that you, 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 if you are thinking in the way or in the pathway, can this be metastatic? Because I give you a very common site for metastasis. I give you a paravertebral site. This is if you look into cases with prostate cancers, with, uh, with uh, ovarian malignancy, with um, uh, you know renal malignancy and uh, whatever, if you look, you will always find that uh, uh, the, the the vertebral column and the paravertebral tissue 
uh, places where you probably can get the, 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 the chance of having this, uh, this sort of uh, uh, um, tubular metastasis. And this is uh, quite important to recognize as well. So you can see that even without touching the slide, I probably can tell you that this is, doesn't look like metastatic to me because the blood vessels around it are clear and which usually you will find easily metastasis, metastasis, you know, vascular invasion in the metastasis, around, around the metastasis focus. But the other things as well, which is the, the, the infiltrative, and then we agree uh, together that this is okay malignant, okay? So, so, so the other, the other uh, uh, thing is that, okay, I, I do not want you guys to jump to a diagnosis. I first wanted you to use the exam approach, right? Now, if you are one of those people who jump to a diagnosis and say, this is this, then I'm so sorry you're not ready for the exam yet, okay? You are clever, but what it is that you need to tell me, do you think that this is uh, going to be epithelial malignancy, do you think that you can easily get lymphoma out of the way? Do you think that you, you, you are dealing with melanoma? Or can it be a melanoma? And then, or is it mesenchymal? So this is what I am, I am going through here. Now, I, I am here only to enforce on the approach that you will use for the exam. I am not here to challenge your diagnostic skills. Your diagnostic skills is for you and for your patients and for your future. What we are here trying to do is to access this case as a, as a, as, as, as a general, a generalized um, uh, approach. So some of you did say that there, there, um, it can be a vascular tumor, so you are thinking of the mesenchymal uh, uh, pathway, which is absolutely fine. Some of you felt that there might be some glandular differentiation, like uh, I am on the highest power here now, like when we looked into areas in like here and uh, uh, you know, like uh, here in the, in the middle of the uh, field now, I just let me use the spotlight, like in these areas. So some of you felt that there might be a little bit of, um, of a, a glandular uh, differentiation, which uh, I, 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 see, I see where you are coming from, of course, when, when I look into this area, yes, uh, some glandular, but always when you look exactly, when you look into glandular areas, just think again, am I dealing with a, a, a pseudoglandular formation or not? Uh, some of you thought it might be a lymphoma, uh, okay? Okay, so we have a lot of um, varieties here, and uh, some, some of you saw cords and tubules, and uh, let me go to these areas, which, uh, which uh, you guys felt that there might be a cord and tubules. So let me just see where they are, and I will tell you... Um, uh, my 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 impressions and approach in in a, in, a, in a second as well. After the first, I put this first sentence clearly and widely in the back of my mind. And if you go to the edge, you might find a little bit of uh, some uh, cord-like structures and uh, and the tubules or or, or a trabecular appearance, which is fine. These are the areas which make would make some people think of a lymphoma. But what you probably are able to see when we look into areas like here is the fact that you have a clear distinction between what appears to be a small lymphoid infiltrate and the background tumor cells. Now, this clear distinction, you will not see it in lymphoma cases. You will either see, as you know, small cell population, large cell populations, or mixed population, but you do not see. What you do not see in lymphoma cases is that clear distinction between the, the, the different and variable cells. Uh, obviously, uh, melanoma, I cannot 
rule it out completely out of the equations. But one of you guys said at the earlier phase, I felt that this as tumor has got a lot of areas of hemorrhage, especially when you go down into the bottom of the section here. So I agree with this narration that there are a little bit of hemorrhage. Now let's just focus a little bit on 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 something like this. The first thing is that you you will when you see areas of hemorrhage, then you need to un, to tell me if you do see really the hemorrhage in uh, a connective tissue stroma, then this is a hemorrhage by definition. The hemorrhage is a red blood cell extravasation that occur and take place in a connective tissue. So the supportive connective tissue between the cells is the one that should be harboring the red blood cells. Now, this, uh, this area, or what I'm saying is now I learned it in one of the international conferences. Okay? So, so I learned it a few, ye few, few years back, but I never, I didn't forget it. Okay? So I will tell you that this is this uh, the hemorrhage when you see it go for it yes and just define for me where do you see the red blood cells yes do you see the red blood cells in what appears to be like spaces or do you see them in empty spaces like vessels or do you see them in just connective tissue stroma so i am going to go through into these areas and you might say, oh, I don't know. Yes, that's absolutely fine. If you don't know, that's absolutely fine. But for the hemorrhage, just if you if you can, if you can train yourself on this skill, it will help you a lot in the future. Okay, and I will just stop by 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 a space like here. You can what you can see is the red blood cells are trying to fill this space. Okay, you can see. Um, and, and then you might say, no, 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 we still have some red blood cells here around in stroma. Okay, we will come back to this again, but here again, I will go here. Look, you have a little bit of a clifting. Just to follow my, my, my um, arrow here and my laser pointer, you will see clifting. Really, the clifting, that means that there is a space. And ideally, this is, these are very subtle features. But this is your lifesaver features because as soon as you define the fact that there are clefting, then you're probably, wow, okay. So that means that I am dealing with a vascular space. Look, this group of red blood cells here, which I am marking now, this is clearly, clearly and utterly filling out this uh, type of uh, this this space you can see even the clefting artifacts around it. but so so to me i probably okay i cannot ignore the fact that this might be an epithelial uh, sorry uh, a, a, a mesenchymal tumor with some vascular differentiation just uh, just let me rehearse more on the case because that's not all what it is for the fact that we, we have a lot of these plant cells. These, and they, they are not particularly related to space. Okay, we agree that some of these are not particularly related to spaces. Okay, and they are just plump. They are just standing there, sitting there. They look really pleomorphic. There is a lot of mitotic activity scattered around. You can probably see them very well in this field. So what it is, Okay, I wanted you now to go back to the areas of is it epithelial or not? Okay, if it is epithelial, but you do not, you cannot put it down a squamous cell or adenocarcinoma or neuroendocrine carcinoma. These are big group of epithelial malignancy. Then ideally, you should tell me that. So one of the things in your answer, you should tell me that you did not see keratinization, intracellular bridges, you did not see uh, intracellular, intracellular keratinization, 
you did not see a pure glandular secretion. You did not see mucinous differentiation to go for adeno. But what we you will be left, which is absolutely correct, is the poorly differentiated carcinoma. Okay, so now you are narrowing all new carcinoma. You don't see new endocrine features here. You have a very prominent nucleoli present throughout. And therefore, yes, you think if these cells are plump, they look epithelioid. So you are in the category now of epithelioid looking malignancy, and you 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 eliminated all the subtypes of epithelial malignancy, but you are staying with what we call it the 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 uh, poorly differentiated uh, carcinoma. Okay, and this is uh, absolutely fine. So so the other things as well, which I um, wanted to 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 highlight, then. Then whenever you come next to this area, then, okay, melanoma will stay in your differential. But first, we did not give you, uh, I did not give you any history of melanoma. So you have to be careful with this. The second thing as well, you tend to get a lot of nuclear inclusions in melanoma. We, for those who might have screened spe through the slides, I can guarantee you there isn't any uh, kind of Pigment, pigments within this. The other thing is that you tend in melanoma as well to get a lot of bi-nucleation, uh, and, uh, and the, 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 this, but nevertheless, if you wanted to keep the melanoma, you keep it, but you will have to justify why you are keeping it. Now, and this will be important in the differential diagnosis, how you will phrase it for a case like this. So when then we are left with, with the mesenchymal branch of the things. So we said, okay, it's not lymphoma. It is, um, some of you said lympho, uh, um, um, uh, the, the carcinoma, uh, let me just, uh, go through this uh, lymphoepithelial like carcinoma. Yes, th this is not the right site for it. Yes, you see the lymphoepithelial carcinoma is a carcinoma that you tend to see more in the head and neck region. So this is uh, now very far away, miles away. So I wouldn't uh, be uh, particularly particular on this, but yes, it's a good thought, but I would expect to have more lymphoid. Actually, a lymphoepithelial carcinoma you tend to struggle to find the epithelial component, not to struggle to find the lymphoid component. So it is usually it's a lymphoid-rich uh, type tumor. If you if you if you look at the, those, um, the the thing is that okay, if we are in the mesenchymal category, then you have to 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 think a little bit as well systematic. Okay, if I am going to put or include anything in my mesenchymal differential diagnosis, what is it that I am going to put? If you go to any textbook, any textbook of soft tissue, they will tell you I have what you will call it, the, the uh, lipid type tumor or the fat tumor, like the liposarc, the differentiated liposarc, all of those groups. And then you also have, of course, the fibrohistiocytic, and then you have the neuronal smooth muscle, you have the, the uh, skeletal muscles, and then you have the, um, the, the, uh, the vascular tumors, and then you have additional ones, additional divisions, which are unclassified groups. You all know and are aware of these classifications, but in the soft tissue, yes, it is fair to be able to know this classification, but what will happen, and we'll try to emphasize in this approach, especially for those who do not see a lot of soft tissue, is that, that you need also to link this, that if the, 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 the respectable textbook of soft tissue will tell you that besides you have to divide the soft tissue into those, you still have to divide them as well into spindles, um, small round blue cells, uh, epithelial or epithelioid, uh, sorry, epithelioid and you and the pleomorphic. So these are four categories. You have to subdivide your your subtype 
those tissue of origin into this format. And then you then uh, basically apply the, the, the rules of, of the case uh, thereafter. Uh, of, of, of how epithelial is it, does it look like epithelial neuronal, epithelial soft tissue, uh, so epithelial hysteocytic or epithelial vascular. Now we know that one of the main features that we saw is these vascular spaces, which we, we you, I know that a lot of you are very eager now to, 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 to know that they are correct, which you are. Yes, this is epithelioid angiosarcoma. Okay, so this is the answer for this case, if you know it, Andrew Sarcoma. But it's not, again, I am not here in a race of the diagnosis, but what I wanted to tell you, how we will deal with this now, if it's to come in the exam. If, if you decided to put an epithelioid and your sarcoma without putting me any differential diagnosis whatsoever, and then I will probably penalize you as unsafe pathologist. Okay, I cannot give you a deduction mark, you know. But in the exam sheets, in the correction mark, did the, the what will happen is did the one of the items that we will be scoring you against is did you really show the right approach? What I mean is, did you go stepwise like what I have been doing for the last 20 or 30 minutes for this case and excluding and eliminating one by one? Did you show me the closest differential diagnosis like what we said in this case? We have, for example, the poorly differentiated carcinoma and melanoma that we couldn't completely roll out. So these are also another things that you need to put into the differential. You see, the, 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 um, the, the, uh, but the, the writing the differential diagnosis is an art. It is not only about writing the differential for this case, melanoma, carcinoma, and lymphoma. No, you know, you have to tell me in your differential, I have considered you see, so you would say, if I am if I am to sit down tomorrow morning and write an answer for this case, in my diagnosis sections, I would say, I am favoring this case for to be epithelioid and eusarcoma. Okay? Uh, I have also considered in my differential diagnosis the following. Number one, poorly differentiated carcinoma. I will open bracket and I will say, I have, uh, this, is, this is less likely because I did not see any well differentiated component, i.e. glandular or squamous component in proximity to this tumor, okay? This is an uncommon site for this type of tumor, unless if they are metastasis, but you don't have a previous history to suggest that this is a metastatic disease, you are correlating now. You are telling me that you read the history. And you then you, then you can also put, now my, my second differential for this case is malignant melanoma. I have excluded this case because, uh, oh, oh, this is unlikely, sorry, this is unlikely because I did not see, first, I was not provided with a history of melanoma elsewhere. S secondly, I did not see pigmentation, okay? And melanoma, idealistically, does not get characterized by this vascular or slit-like space, okay? Number three, you would say, I have considered high-grade non-hodgkin lymphoma, okay? So you're not telling me the word lymphoma and running away. You are telling me which one of the lymphoma book, textbook you've considered, because otherwise it will be madness. But you can tell me high-grade lymphomas, like such as T cells, for example, will have mixed population of inflammatory cells and lymphoid cells. This is not the case here. 
The second, that you did not see enough evidence of lymphoid infiltrate in the background to suggest that this might be a, lymph, uh, a lymphoproliferative disorder. Okay? So, and then you close the bracket. Now, epithelial, uh, if you, I, I will not, I will include, yes, the first category, I will include the um, other epithelioid sarcomas was considered, such as epithelioid uh, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor and epithelioid uh, um, um, uh, Lyme sarcoma. Okay, these are tumors which can give you the epithelioid look, epithelioid uh, rhabdo. Okay, so these are tumors which can give you the epithelioid appearance. However, I have ruled those out because, first of all, I did not see any neuronal differentiation or large neuronal bundles next to these uh, cells. The cell doesn't have this neuronal differentiation. In a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, in a big section like this, ideally, you will see areas which showing you some focal neuronal differentiation. You don't see any fascicular pattern. It is a very haphazard uh, pattern here. And this is obviously telling you directly that this is not going, it's not going to be um, the the uh, the you know like uh, uh, angio sarc or or rhabdo because and or neuronal because this tumor in general to start with to open the book and start with they will tell you these are fascicular tumor okay epithelioid or non epithelioid they will have to have some kind of arrangement for cells this haphazard arrangement of cells are. Uh, are uh, quite important. The other things as well, which I wanted to, to highlight into this case, which is another important feature uh, for, for this uh, type of uh, tumor, and this is uh, something that I have been taught, and you need to understand uh, that um, the angiosarc is a tumor that creates spaces, vascular or slit-like spaces, that's the best description for it. I wouldn't call it vascular spaces. I will call them slit-like spaces that tends to transect the collagen. So the tissue of the collagen will be transected by the tumor cells. This concept is very important, especially when you are in an area like skin. But I wanted to tell you a theory here. You tend to get a cell with a cytoplasm and that cytoplasm would have a red blood cells in the cytoplasm of it. In actual fact, go back to this case again and try to figure out that phenomenon because this phenomenon is quite unique to the vascular tumor, either hemangioendothelioma or angiosarc. These features will be quite unique. You see, what I'm pointing at, let me just put the pointer back again, is an areas. Um, like here, if you look into some individual cells, you will be able, I don't know why my pointer is not coming, but if you look into a cell like this one, you can see that there is a red blood cell sitting next to a nucleus. In actual fact, it is sitting inside the cytoplasm, and uh, it's not important. If, if the cell were a single lung, to, to its primary or, or metastasis is not the issue here. Yes, it can be metastatic, but this is a common site for, for primary angiosarc as well. But this is not the issue. The issue here is that this angiosarc, you know, primary or second or, or metastatic angiosarc, this is not going to be... Uh, it's not, no, just angiosarc, that's fine, because we didn't give you a history of others, but in, in your additional information, uh, which we will come to, you can mention something like this. Yes, sorry, so I'll go back to the red blood cells again. So the red blood cells will sit inside the cytoplasm. So rather than the cytoplasm of these cells will start to fuse together in a column, you can see the red blood cells are trying to arrange themselves in columns. Just try to follow any of the columns. And my apology, I don't know why my pointer is not stopped function. But anyway, 
but you can follow that up. You can see that there are columns of red blood cells. These are columns from inside cytoplasm of these cells, which will then start to fuse together. And when they fuse together, they start to form a slit-like space or a space that will start to become a channel. In actual fact, because it has got a dissecting nature to it, what you will find is that if you are to follow some of the, the columns of red blood cells, you will then find them that they are connecting to each other as if they are one thread that they are trying to connect. You know, if you get a pencil and follow the dots of the red blood cells, you will be able to connect them and then you will see what we mean by the dissecting pattern. This, this pattern is a dissecting pattern. These slate-like spaces trying to create themselves as spaces by dissecting the tissue around them and get filled with red blood cells. Now, some of you earlier mentioned the term Kaposi sarcoma. Now, Kaposi, I probably would agree with Kaposi if we were in the area of the spindle and you thought, you know, the, like the spindle, one, the classic one, that's absolutely fine. I will be happy with that terminology or to, or to put that differential Kaposi. But uh, here, if you don't, uh, you've not been given um, history of HIV, immunocompromised individuals, you know, there is nothing like this. And therefore, I would um, um, uh, uh, a little bit deviate from Kaposi, but in other areas, like in lymph nodes, like uh, in other areas, like in the skin, uh, in uh, where Kaposi's are common, I will, I will entertain this. But here, in the middle of nowhere, just uh, be careful what you wish for, okay? So just, uh, just uh, uh, that's fine. But again, if you are to put it, you don't get penalized. But you have to tell me, you have to tell me what, how you will differentiate it. So you have to say the HHV8 uh, immune stains and things. So the next point after we uh, exhausted the differential diagnosis will, will, or the approach for a case like this is to confirm the diagnosis, okay? So you, in your diagnosis, you are failing it for, for an angiosarcoma, okay? And be careful what you wish for because if you are favoring it for angiosar, then when you are telling me in your additional or, or additional work section, then you have to tell me how you will resolve this problem that you created for yourself up in the diagnosis and differential diagnosis section. So if you are going to diagnose an angiosarcoma, Without using a single immunohistochemistry staining, I would say you, you are one of those people who will lose their job one day because they will get caught with one cases that will come back and bite you and you will lose your career. Okay? I do not think that it is wise for soft tissue tumor, personally, to do proceed for diagnosis without doing an immunohistochemistry staining. Now, I was lucky enough to work with um, uh, uh, Professor Cyril Fisher for a good number of months, and I I am yet, although I am yet to would have remembered seeing him diagnosing a mesenchymal tumor with even with all of his 40 years or 50 years of experience in the field that knowing the diagnosis within two seconds, he would still tell me, you know, Ahmed, just go and do this amino for this case to confirm it is. Okay? So... I will write in the additional work up that I would like to confirm this 
by doing the CD31 or CD34 or DT, DT40, choose whatever vascular markers you would like to do. That's absolutely fine, okay? However, you would say, um, as I have uh, to rule out what I have included in my differential diagnosis, I also will include one of the cytokeratins or pancytokeratins. I would also probably in this um, uh, exclude uh, uh, the uh, or, 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 or just do S100 for the melanomas and uh, and the others. Now the 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 panel that I have seen and what we would expect you in the college to give me for mesenchymal malignancy, not for this particular case, but, but for mesenchymal and soft tissue cases, the primary screening panel are the pancytokeratin, like AE1, AE3, or any pancytokeratins. If you want to just leave a pancytokeratin, that's fine. You do the SMA, you do Desmond, and you do CD34 and S100, okay? So if you, if you, that is the primary screening panel that we will do in the United Kingdom. And we don't go beyond that unless if you have a suspicion for something else. Like for this particular case, I have the suspicion for the, the, um, Oh, I think it is vascular. Then I started with what I think it is. So in this particular case, I modified the pathway. So I will do the CD31 or CD34 or ERG or DT40. That's absolutely fine. Whatever you choose, just do two of them because you know there is a pectorals in one of the vascular markers in this angiosarts. And then subsequently, I will do the, the, the panel, the primary screening panel. Okay, I will continue with that primary screening panel because this is what the United Kingdom doctors do. This is what we are expecting you to do in the exam, either if you work in the, in the UK or you work outside the UK. This is a UK exam. I'm so sorry, you all have to be compliant with it. Okay, so this is uh, one, one important thing. So yes, you can divide your immuno into two sections, the section which you are doing the confirmatory immuno and the sections which you are doing the, the, the immuno to exclude what you have uh, put for the examiner as differential diagnosis. So there are two points now to remember about putting a differential diagnosis for the case. First, or three points, first, you cannot leave a differential diagnosis without favoring something because that will lead you to score of two. If you do not favor, you will score two, even if you write for me 10 pages of answer after that. Okay? Number two, that you remember, whenever you put a differential, just tell me histologically, why do you think it is not it or less likely? Okay? Now, if you are now, uh, a, let's say, a breast pathologist, but you are going to have your exam tomorrow about with a case that's soft tissue, you have been learning soft tissue to just answer the case for the exam. So give me that knowledge. Put it on paper. What you've learned in the last year or last two years in preparation for the exam, just give it to me. In your lifetime, you, if you are, let's say, going to look at the posted course for a good number of years, you will not come again and across an angio sarc in your lifetime. But for this moment of time, when you are sitting in the exam, do not forget it is not about right or wrong, but it's only, but it is also about a conquest of knowledge. I would expect you to tell me some knowledge that you have about mesenchymal tumor into that section, either histologically or either immunohistochemistry knowledge, all of those uh, should, should be um, included into your, uh, your, your answers. And you should say, 
you see, as I told you, if I put a malignant melanoma or metastatic melanoma, malignant melanoma in a differential diagnosis like this, there is no one who will penalize you here, but just open the brackets and tell me if why do you think this differential, although you have to put it to become safe pathologist, but why do you you're not favoring this? Why do you think is that this diagnosis is unlikely? As I told you, the morphology probably of some of the pleomorphism itself is not right, but we don't have pigmentation, we don't have history. Okay. And then you can then say uh, this. I will repeat the primary panel because some of you want it to be repeated. For, for any spindle cell neoplasm, mesenchymal tumor, the primary panel that we do is the pan keratin markers. We usually prefer to use AE1, AE, AE3 because that's a more good uh, spectrum. And then we, then we also do the S100 the SMA, the uh, Desmond, and the CT34. So these are the five immuno. You put them on the case, you are safe here, okay? You put them on the, on the bird, you are safe for majority of cases. This is the panel that uh, Cyril Fisher uh, tends to teach us when we were his fellows and, um, and uh, registrars, that this is a panel he will, he, he, if, if I don't do this panel automatically and take the case to him, he will throw it out in my face. This is exactly what he would do. And I don't blame him because there is a lot of pitfalls among this. So this is, uh, this is just for this. Um, the other things as well, which you, you need to, to highlight is um, in the additional work is that you, you, you probably, um, uh, the, the, if, if you are ever, not particularly this case now, but any, any case for the exam, I would give you additional work. How, how I do think about it when I sit in the exam. Um, um, if, uh, I, will, I will answer these questions in a minute, which have been sent, but if, uh, if I am in additional work, so now the third section of the exam answers, you, the microscopy is the first section, the second section is the differential diagnosis. The third section is additional work, which you will put the immunohistochemistry tables and things in it. But then, then you have um, your, your uh, uh, other additional work. You have to think down this way. Um, so if you would like to take notes of this, will be useful. Number one is, okay, we talked about immunohistochemistry. Immunohistochemistry can be written in a text format or it can be written in a table. It is depends. It depends on what is your differential looking like. If you are in the territory of melanoma, carcinoma, and lymphoma, then a table will be good. If you are in the differential between mesenchymal, smooth muscle, neuronal, uh, or uh, skeletal muscle, or uh, fibrohistiocytic, then you probably will be better off with, on with the table as well, okay? But in a case like this, as I said, I will probably put my first line for CD31 or CD34 as my primary uh, line of the diagnosis of, of, of the immuno without a table, okay? So a uh, table for spindle cells, for round blue cell tumor, because you probably will not be able to, to sometimes reach a final diagnosis, but you can tell me, for example, high-grade spindle cell neoplasm, um, and then you give the differential diagnosis, then what will happen in a case like this? You will um, uh, have to um, put a table, and um, the table, you need to practice on it, okay? You cannot... By, by no means, you can come to the day of the exam or on the paper and try to practice on how you will do the table, okay? Let me tell you that, okay? The table of the immunohistochemistry for the fast speed writer that write very fast, it will take approximately two and a half minutes for each, either the, the round blue cells or the spindle cell tumor, two and a half minutes 
you need to practice to get into that time. Okay? This needs a lot of practice to be able to time your table because the last thing that you wanted to do is, yes, abbreviation is accepted. Absolutely. Abbreviation like SMA is accepted in the, in the exam. So the last thing that you wanted to do in the, in the exam is to run out of time halfway in your table. Now, the problem is that from, from my, my experience when I was invigilating in exams, and I see the students usually running out of time with the tables because they did not practice the timing of it. If you do not know, if, you are, if your handwriting is slow, then, then it, I, it, what it will take approximately around three and a half minutes, and that's a lot of time. That's nearly half the time that has been set up for the case. And you still have some other sections you have to fill. Okay? So the tables have to be practiced very well. One thing I would advise you to do, and this is important, and believe me, on, on the day of the exam, you will remember and you will say, thank God that I practiced on this. When you do your, your table, do it as a landscape. Do not do it on the vertical page. So just open a new page, give yourself an entire page for the table, and then do it on the landscape format, horizontally rather than vertically, because the horizontal table is very easy to, to uh, manipulate, add columns, add rows, but the vertical table Believe me, you will run out of space very quickly. And then whatever, if you want to come back to the table and correct it, it will look horrible and it will start to become more confusing than explaining. And actually what you, you can do as well and use is the, the positive and the negative symbol. If you, just to, if you want to fill your table like melanoma, negative for those, positive for those, so when you put your table, you are putting positive and negative very quickly. So filling the table with plus and minuses. So this is how we, 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 we do it for exams. And this is, we accept that format. These abbreviations and these plus or minus symbols, we will accept this. So this is what I would do. Of course, if, if, if you are running out of time, it is a good way if you don't, if you think that you don't have uh, the the possibility of of uh, of giving a um, a whole a whole table because you run out of time, then you would say, "I will do. I would expect this tumor to be positive four, and I will do this. I would expect this tumor to be negative four, and just give me a quick list, okay?" But be careful, of course, in an angiosarcoma case and the epithelioid sarcomas in general, either epithelioid lyomyosarc or epithelioid angiosarc, that there is a percentage of positivity, focal positivity for the pancytokeratin will be present in this. And it is good to, to mention this in your table because that gives an insight to the examiner that you are you know this and you are very aware of it. Um, the other things which I would um, also uh, tell you that um, is uh, the other things that you can put in the additional work. So also think, do I need an extra block for a case? So for example, when we come to a case of a thyroid case, you might want it to put a, a discomment that in this section, for example, I didn't see a, a, um, a uh, vascular or, or capsular invasion. However, I would like to examine the entire capsule before I commit to this diagnosis. So you are telling the examiner that you, this is what you do this every day. You know, you are not going to give me the diagnosis of a follicular adenoma, for example, on a half a section that I'm giving to you in the exam. You have to tell me 
even if you think in this section, you think it is for a abnormal, but you know there is a caveat. And this caveat is that there is, you have to examine the entire capsule. And if you don't examine the entire capsule, you will be wrong. The other things as well, that if, if for example, you have an area that's not very clear, if there's squamous differentiation, like, for example, I will give you a better example. If you find a seminoma case, if you find a germ cell tumor case, and you don't tell me that you will sample this extensively to look for other components, then you will, then that's not right. Then there is, you will not, there is a problem here because I would expect you in a case like this that you will come and give me your, what you do. You need to search for other components. And obviously, to know if this seminometers is a non seminometers are there any other components? What is the percentage for every component? So if you don't, this is another additional work that you might want it to do. Okay, so if you find your case ending with four blocks, that's not enough. You need to go back and probably double that number to make sure that you exhausted the case so you are confident that this is a monomer with no germ cell component. Okay, so this is another thing. Another uh, areas which I would like you to, 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 to put as well in your mind do I need a special stain? You know, do, do, do I need a, a collagen stain? Do I need a fungal stain? Do I need a, a bacterial, mycobacterial stain? So this is also another area which you can exhaust and you can put at this will you will find it also very useful. Uh, and this, uh, this is how you have to think about it. So when I am thinking about additional work section, I don't only think in, you know, I think if I say, and then what if I don't want to put any additional work? Okay, would I delete it? No, I don't delete that section, but I will put additional work and I will put not uh, non contributory. So I am telling the examiner that I have thought of the area of the additional work. Okay, so I told you for those again who will be very frustrated today that we are slow with the cases. If you wanted to see too many cases at once, for example, if you probably some of you yesterday have saw, saw the Cleveland K clinic uh, lymphoma presentation, excellent presentation, 4,600 plus attendees. But the whole entire lymphoma was given in one hour. Okay, if you are after quantity of number of cases, this is not a platform for at least for me. I'm sure other pathologists will be faster and will give you that. But for me, I am here to tell you more about things that you will remember on the day and things that you need to put it now to practice your exam. Now, there was a question which I said I will come back to it. Uh, yes, if you don't favor, uh, or, or you favor, but you favor the wrong answer. Now, the, the, the wrong answer is, um, will pro will, it depends, because if the case is very difficult and your wrong answer was in differential, and you put the amino correct, then you probably, you might score two or 2.5, but if you score two, it will not be the borderline fail, that will be the borderline pass. So that would not be counted in your maximum failure cases for the exam for the short surgical. So you will be safe, providing that you have shown us how you will resolve the problem. Whenever you raise a problem in your differential diagnosis, solve it. Do not leave the examiner to think that you will be going behind the scene and solving this problem. It is not about putting list. It is about how we be able to do that. Now, yes, I will be sending, sending the link of the last lectures and these lectures. These are the two that we have recorded it. I think the first one, because we were in team, it didn't. I just will need to 
to to edit the last one because I couldn't because we you know we had some stuff stop in the middle and I was sent like three links from Zoom for the same lecture so I I then will have to link them together from last time but today one I think it was all in one so that way I will be able to send you the link uh, which I think Zoom sent I I record it. So Zoom send me the link. I will send you that link which Zoom have sent me, and you will be able to access it. If you have a problem with accessing it, just let me know, and then we will try to figure out that. Okay, but yes, I will. I will. We we will be recording this. So for those who this time is not suitable for them, they cannot make it. That's fine, absolutely fine. But we will um, uh, do that. We, I can, can I allow you to record on Zoom? I'm not sure. If you send me the how I can uh, allow you to record yourself, please send me the link. I think if you are paying in Zoom, you can record. But if you are a member who's on basic and not paying, I don't think they will allow you to record. But uh, I, 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 I am happy now. We are not going over time like the last time, a couple of times because I know you guys are busy. And uh, uh, keep giving us feedbacks because we need to know if you find that useful or not, the format is useful or not, if you hate it or not, because if you really, really hate it, then at least I know I am a bit failure and then we will, uh, we will be happy to either change pathologies or change format. So we can, we can see which one we can, because this, it's your time that's very valuable and we have to really, really, really be, be on the, on the uh, you know, uh, we, we have to, to do that, okay? Yes, we can send the survey, absolutely, we can do that. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in and uh, thank you all for, every, for, 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 for listening and for all your contributions, okay.